I'm sending these three packages to three different virtual mailbox addresses, each with an Apple AirTag tracking device. Why? Well, I wanna find out not only how virtual addresses work, but whether or not they're secure. Let's face it, we often send very sensitive information through the mail to these addresses. Now, instead of just tracking these devices, I'm gonna go ahead and visit each one of these locations to find out what happens once these packages arrive at their destination. Have you ever wondered how virtual addresses work? Well, let's go find out. To make this work, I've chosen three different addresses from a couple virtual address services. I've sent each package at the same time from the same location with a guaranteed delivery date so that I control as many variables as possible. Mind you, I'm not trying to review these virtual mailbox services nor am I testing whether or not FedEx delivers on time, although I'm sure we'll learn a lot in both cases. I have a theory though that not every virtual address is the same and that by doing this, we can both make better, more secure decisions about how we handle our mail virtually. So while these three packages start moving, let me give you a quick refresher on the basics of virtual addresses. Fundamentally, a virtual address works like a sophisticated P.O. box. You're given an address that masks your real location where you can legally accept mail. But as you can see here, there are so many more advantages that a virtual address has over a P.O. box. The way it works is this. Mail gets sent to your virtual address, which is a real street address. And depending on the location, your mail either gets sorted on site or forwarded to a sorting facility. That's a really important distinction that we'll unpack in just a moment. Once received, the mail is scanned and I'm sent an alert either via email or on my phone that my account has new mail. Now, I can tell the company to do a number of things with this mail. If it's a letter, I can have them open and scan the mail. If it's a check, I can have them deposit the check for a fee. For other mail or packages, I can have them forward it to whatever address I want. I can also just tell them to trash it if it's junk. Most of the time, I just download the scanned mail and have them shred the physical mail. For packages, I'll have them forward it to whatever address I happen to be located at that time. Okay, now that we have the basics covered, let's see what's happening to our three packages. My first package, addressed to an office building in Anaheim, California, left Dallas on Monday and was successfully delivered on Wednesday. This and the second package to a Dallas address are both from post-scan mail and they both showed up in my account the very next day. The third virtual address, another Dallas one from Traveling Mailbox, was delivered successfully on Wednesday, but it still has a few days to go since Dallas isn't its final destination. Why is that? Well, herein lies important lesson number one that you need to understand about virtual addresses. Not all addresses are created equal. There's a big difference between a forwarding hub and a sorting hub. Virtual address companies offer hundreds of addresses across the country and even the world, but what they often don't tell you is that many, if not most of these addresses are, they're just forwarding addresses. They don't sort or scan your mail at that address. They simply forward it to the company's main hub. Now, I know that may seem a little bit confusing, so let's go and visit each of these addresses so that you can see exactly what I mean. Welcome to my first Dallas address, which is simply a UPS store located just north of downtown. If you sent my business anything, it would come here first. I know that my package arrived on Wednesday. FedEx promised me that. But according to my Apple AirTags, it stayed here for about another two days before being shipped off to North Carolina, which is where Traveling Mailbox has their primary sorting hub. What's interesting is that a good portion of these virtual addresses are things like this. They're UPS stores, they're WeWork office addresses, or they're things like the next address that we're going to here in Dallas. It's also a small mailing center. The difference with this post-scan mail address is that instead of having your mail immediately forwarded to a sorting hub, your mail is actually processed here, meaning that you can have it scanned, you can have it opened, shredded, forwarded, or you could even go in and pick it up yourself. Important lesson number two, it is entirely possible for you to rent a virtual address where you can physically go and pick up your mail. In fact, if you live near the address you rented, that might save you money, keeping you from having to spend it on forwarding all the letters and packages that come to your virtual address. Now, they still operate just like a virtual address, scanning, shredding, forwarding your mail, and they can even be used as a registered address for your small business, but I mean, it's a mailing center. For some people, it might not look very professional. Also, this isn't Fort Knox. I mean, they're not gonna be giving away your mail, but at the same time, if security is your highest priority, there are better options out there.
Okay, now that I have one package safely back in my possession and the sun is starting to set, let's do a quick 10 second travel montage as I make my way to Anaheim, California. Welcome to California. Let's go visit my final virtual address and hopefully get a better idea of what kind of security is possible with a virtual address. Okay, I'm here at PostScan Mail's Anaheim address, which is their primary hub. And as you can see here, it's a pretty nondescript building. Just a front door, a back door, both of them locked and covered by security cameras. But I wanna get my piece of mail here. It says that delivery is in the back, so that's where I'm headed. PostScan Mail was gracious enough to allow me inside their warehouse to meet the folks that work inside, wonderful people, but also to understand the process of how they receive mail, how they scan it, how they sort it, and how someone like me could come in person to pick up a piece of mail. May I have your ID? So as you just heard, I had to give over a, an official form of government ID in order to pick up my mail. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yes, So based on this visit, important lesson number three is that if privacy and security are your main concerns, then it's really important that you choose an address that is a primary hub for the virtual address provider that you're choosing. I mean, not only does it limit the number of locations that your mail has to travel to, it also limits the number of people that come in contact with your mail, and it provides a secure location for your mail to be stored until you're ready to forward it or shred it. As I record this, it's been exactly eight days since I first sent the packages via FedEx. You've been with me as I picked up two of those packages and this afternoon, I just received a notification that my third package arrived. Eight days. I don't receive time sensitive mail, so that's not a big deal for me, but it might be for you. The absolute irony here is that many of these virtual address companies charge us extra for what they term premium addresses. The only premium thing about them is being able to have an address in a particular city or state, which for me, that was important. But the reality is that these premium addresses require three to six extra business days for mail to get processed, which also means a higher risk of mail being mishandled since it's going through an extra set of hands, an extra shipment. All that to say, before you subscribe to any virtual address, I would ask a few important questions. First, what level of security do you want? If you're sending sensitive mail, make sure you find and choose a primary mail hub. I'll put a link to the primary hubs for both post-scan mail and traveling mailbox in the description below. I like both of these companies. Second, do you need the option to pick up your mail in person? Some companies charge you extra to pick up mail in person and others don't, so you'll just have to find that out yourself. Third, do you often receive time-sensitive mail? If so, you'll wanna double check to make sure that the address you choose is not a forwarding address. And that's not always clear on the website. Like I said, some of them market these as premium addresses, which sounds good, but in reality, it just means slower mail times. And finally, do you care what your address looks like when people look it up on something like Google Maps? For some business people, a mom and pop mail center just doesn't exude the kind of professionalism they want for their business address. So they're willing to pay more for one of those office addresses. For individuals and those who are just looking for more privacy, it doesn't matter if it's a, a UPS store or a little shack in the middle of the desert. I hope this video was both educational and entertaining. Please give it a thumbs up and use the affiliate links in the description below if you decide to go with either PostScan Mail or Traveling Mailbox, both of which I use and recommend.